Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're gonna go over my favorites from the past two months, which is gonna be March and April of 2018. I tend to do these videos every other month because I don't really think, you know, one month is enough time to test something out enough to really call it a favorite. For something to be in this video, I have to use it several times, know how it works, tested it, tried and true, used it throughout the two months or as long as I've had it. I'd want it definitely be longer than just a couple of weeks. I did do a video for January and February of this year of my favorites and fails. I'll go ahead and throw that up in the cards above. So before we jump into the video, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like these favorites videos. And if you want to see any more videos in the future, don't forget to subscribe. And while you're down there, hit the little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video. I'm loving the green lip today. I was really feeling it. This is Jeffree Star Crocodile Tears. Love green. I'm the green queen. That's me. So I'm gonna go over my favorites in the order that I would normally apply them to my face. I'm gonna start with foundations first. I actually have three foundations that have been my favorites over the past couple of weeks slash two months. And the first one, if you've seen any of my videos over the past couple of weeks, you'll see this coming from a mile away. This is the Chantecaille Future Skin Oil-Free Gel Foundation. I am almost out of this little buddy. There's only, I don't know if you can see like through the jar, there's only like less than a fourth of the jar left. I have the shade Alabaster. This has been my go-to foundation since I've gotten it. I never use foundation as often as I use this one because I have so many ones to pick from. But once I tried this out and loved the way it looked on my skin, I kept using it over and over and over and over and over. And eventually I had to stop myself from using it because I'm almost out and it's an expensive foundation. I don't know if I'm going to rebuy it afterwards, but I love it. I really love it. It's just, it just works so well with my skin right now. It's just the amount of coverage. It lasts well throughout the day. It doesn't break down with my sweat. It doesn't look bad on my dry areas. It's just, mwah, just my foundation. This is Monica's foundation right here. And I'm gonna be really sad when I run out of it. But for right now, it's actually in my drawer. So I'm trying to get some use out of some other foundations that I have. The next foundation that I have that's been a longtime favorite of mine is the Peach Perfect Comfort Matte Foundation from Too Faced. This is the best transfer proof, medium coverage, matte foundation you will find. And it's actually transfer proof, like, without a doubt. I have the shade Warm Nude. That's a little too dark for me right now. I use a lightener to lighten it up. But during the summer, this is my perfect shade match. This makes me matte without making me look dry. It controls my oily areas. It doesn't look bad on my other areas, on my very dry areas. This is like my go-to safe foundation. Like I wore this for both of my Sephora interviews and those were like long days where I knew I was gonna be have to be outside. It was hot, I was nervous and everything, but this foundation came through for me. <laughs> the last foundation I'm going to be talking about is actually a BB cream from Misha. This is the Perfect Cover BB cream. I have shades 21 and 27. So 21 is the right like lightness for me, but the undertone is horrible. It's really, really cool. It makes me look dead if I just wear this. 27 has my correct undertone. It's nice and golden. It, the undertone is perfect, but it's way too dark for me. So if I mix both of these together, I get my perfect shade match and it's a lovely, lovely medium buildable coverage BB cream. It lasts well throughout the day. It sits on your skin beautifully. The only downside is that it smells like really bad. <laughs> it smells like old ladies. <laughs> It smells like old lady skincare, um, but it has SPF 42. It's got, you know, it's really good for your skin, especially in the summer, especially if you're gonna be outside. And the scent does eventually wear off, especially if you're wearing a powder over it, it does go away. But just when you are applying it, if you're sensitive to scent, you might not like it. But this works well throughout the day. I'm not sure about all the skincare benefits, like they say on the bottle about like, lightens skin tone, you know, heals wrinkles and blemishes. I don't know about all that, but it is a good medium coverage BB cream. It doesn't break down throughout the day. It doesn't look bad on my skin. It's a solid, solid BB cream. And it's really affordable if you get it on Amazon. I'll try to link down where I found it on Amazon, but if not, I also got, I got 21 on Amazon and then I got 27 at Target. So you can find this at Target. My next favorite for the past couple of months has been the Dermacol Makeup Cover. I have the shade 210. I was using this as a spot concealer for the breakout on the tip of my nose. It was a very bad 
not a cyst but kind of a cyst i get it like twice a year it's like the really large pimple i get on my nose it stays for a few weeks and then eventually it goes back down this is the only thing that will fully cover it up and not budge throughout the day at all and it doesn't just like cover it up but then you see like redness it fully covers it <laughs> this is the most potent high powerful high coverage concealer out there I would only use it really to spot conceal though because the minute you start trying to use it all over your face it'll sink into wrinkles it'll crack it'll look bad but if you're spot concealing with it you're golden because it's so high coverage using it to spot conceal really just masks whatever you have underneath it and as long as you powder it correctly it'll last i'll go ahead and throw up the video where i was applying this in my full coverage foundation routine and i show you how i wear this underneath my foundation and it's been my go-to concealer for the past couple of months again i got this off of amazon it was less than 20 dollars so i'm not sure how much it's going to be right now i will let you know though that i bought this i bought this over six months ago and i've only used like this much of the tube like there's all of this left my next favorite is a face powder from Natasha Denona. This is the Invisible HD Face Powder in number one light. This has quickly kicked out every other loose powder, every other pressed powder in my collection. I use this to bake under my eyes. It's, it gives a lovely cooling sensation, like a tingly sensation under my eyes, and I love it. I use it all over the rest of my face as a finishing powder, and it just gives the softest, like, blurring glow to your face. It's very expensive. It's Natasha Denona, of course it is, but I just, I love it. And one thing that is a pro and a con is that the sifter lets out a lot of product. It's a pro when you're trying to bake and you need, you don't want to just sit there and keep banging the thing over and over to get product out. But it's a con because even if I just open it up a little bit and I'm not like sure there's not too much product in there, you're gonna lose a lot of product. And when it's this expensive, you don't want to lose the product. I've actually been guilty of like, picking the powder off of my vanity with my brush and putting it on because I don't want to waste that much powder. <laughs> but it is a lovely powder. I've been loving it over the past couple of months. And like I said, it's kicked out every other powder and it's become my go-to no matter what powder. Next, I'm going to talk about a face palette that I've been loving. This is the Too Faced Natural Face Palette. This comes with two highlighters, two blushes, and two bronzers. And this is actually the first palette that really got me into blush. The pink sand shade up here is the most beautiful like dark mauvey blush. It's gonna look beautiful on deeper skin tones and look beautiful in the summer. My favorite highlighter is Satin Sheets right here. I've actually used it enough to wear out the imprint on the product already. <laughs> love it it's stunning i really like sunny honey the bronzer right over here the bronzer up on the bottom tropic like it's hot it does have some shimmer to it so i don't use it as often but it is still a beautiful bronzer these all blend out beautifully they're not patchy they're super super pigmented that's another thing if you're using this bronzer don't like swirl and put it on you're gonna need to just use a little bit tap it off put it on because it's so pigmented it'll blend out but it'll be pigmented so a little at a time build it up overall this was a palette that i had my eye on for quite some time and i'm really happy that i picked it up because i've been getting a whole lot of use out of it speaking of palettes a palette that i've been practically glued to has been the abh sugar glow kit particularly the starburst highlight right down here it has quickly become one of my favorite highlighters and just to think of it like when i first got this palette i saw that and i was like what am i gonna do with that like it looks like an odd shade but on the skin it's stunning it blends in it doesn't look like a stripe that's what i love about the abh highlighters you can put them on and they're blinding but you can still blend them in i love to put it on with the abh highlighter brush and then blend it out with a dual fiber stippling brush just to give it a more natural but still blinding look you know oh so i love starburst i've been reaching it for it a lot i've actually worn through quite a bit of the pan i'm gonna be really sad when i hit pan on this because i'm pretty sure I would rebuy the whole palette just for Starburst, which I shouldn't. Like, they need to start making their highlighters as singles. That way I can just refill whatever part of the palette I need, but I love Starburst. Another favorite you will know if you've seen any of my past videos for the past couple of weeks is my favorite mascara, and that's been the Chantecaille Faux Sils. I'm butchering that name still. Mascara. 
it's on its last legs right now. It'll be done by the end of the month. But this, it's the perfect size wand right here for my eyes. It is the perfect formula. It's not too wet, it's not too dry. It dries fast on my actual lashes and it doesn't smudge. Like at the end of the day, normally with any other mascara, even my favorite mascaras, I'll end up with a little bit of like a smudge down here just because I work a lot. I tend to do this, I tend to like lean on my face. I sweat, you know? At the end of the day with this mascara, nothing. <laughs> nothing budged and I still have these beautiful like big fluffy lashes. And as I mentioned in my products, I'm upset that I liked the video. I'm upset that I like this because it's such an expensive mascara and I don't know if I'm gonna like the full size because I find that, you know what? I think I'm just liking a lot of mini mascaras. A favorite for my brows has been the ABH Dip Brow in Granite. So I did used to have this product, I still do, it's in my collection. I used to have it in dark brown and I was using that for a while and I thought it looked fine but I was really hoping to go darker with my brows. I found that when my brows are darker, when I was using like liquid liner to fill them in or gel liner to fill them in, I liked the look a lot better. So I picked up Granite during the Sephora sale and I'm loving the effect on my brows. I'm wearing it today. I just feel that with my darker hair, it just pulls my look together, especially because I normally always wear black. So I feel it ties in with the hair, it ties in with the outfit and it just looks, like darker hair just looks better on me. So I am glad that I picked this up. I've been using this ever since I got it during the sale. I've gotten a decent sized dip in it so far and I'm happy that I picked the darker shade. Last but not least, an eyeliner favorite of mine is from Givenchy. This is the Liner Vinyl Eyeliner. This was so expensive, but I needed an eyeliner. The sale was going on. I kept the box because I feel like with something that expensive, I just, I keep the boxes. But this is what it looks like. It's actually unique in that it breaks right here, but this whole top part is the brush. I don't know if you can see, like this entire thing right here is the brush right there. And then this little ink well is where all of the ink is. This is a conditional favorite of mine, and I'll tell you why. If you are very careful, if you apply your eyeliner perfectly, and you let it dry, that's the thing. This thing doesn't dry right away. I have to sit there and either do this, or sit and like not blink at all until it dries. Like if it smudges, you're just screwed because there's no way to clean it up because it's that black, it's that pigmented, and it just won't budge. So, if you apply it perfectly, if you let it dry all the way, you will have the most pigmented, bulletproof black liner known to man, ever. I cried with this on, didn't budge. I got caught in the rain with this on, didn't budge. I sweat through it, I've put this through hell and high water, and it stays. And this is actually hard to get off at the end of the night, but if I don't put it on perfectly in the morning, if it smudges, like my whole makeup look is ruined. So this is definitely not an eyeliner for beginners. It's not a, like, still, even I would consider myself an intermediate eyeliner user and I still sometimes have difficulties with it. So that's why it's a conditional favorite, but when I can get it right, when I can get it right, it is a perfect liner, perfect. So those are all my favorites over the past couple of months. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe so you can catch all my future videos. And I hope I'll see you in my next one. Bye.